making a knot with double thread. Pinch between thumb and forefinger and pull that up until you're almost at the end. Twist it around that finger so it's held between the two. Roll the thread off your finger and then grip it with the next finger and pull it back the other way and that has formed a, a knot underneath. You can trim the tiny excess bit away if you don't want that to show. If you don't want any edge at all, then you're gripping with nothing showing. Pull it round your finger, no end showing at all. Roll it off your finger and catch and pull. And that's formed a tiny knot underneath. If you want to, you can sew using a thimble. It will protect your thumb, but the most vulnerable finger is actually this one sitting underneath. So I prefer to sew without a thimble and you just need to take care. You can see how, yes, your thumb is vulnerable, but so is that finger under there. The stitch that we use for sewing on ribbons is called overstitch. You can think of it as an understitch as well, but its name is overstitch and it looks like this. We start by coming up through the fabric, allowing the knot to stop it. Now here's the over part of the stitch and there's the under and there's the pull through. Over, under, and through. Over, under, and when you look at it underneath, if I go through all of the fabric, you can see the stitches forming. This practice piece is a two-layered piece of fabric. And I don't have to catch both layers. I could just catch the top layer without, without the needle coming through underneath. And that means when you form the stitch, it won't show underneath. Applied in the context of ballet shoes, let's imagine this black practice fabric is a ballet shoe. I'm placing the ribbon on and I'm starting with a piece of thread. I'm going to go over and under and to go all the way along the top, which is covered in the videos, over and under. Over and under. Under, That is overstitch. Casting off. The stitch for casting off is to create a little stitch and then to come back through your own loop. There's the loop and as the thread comes back through it, it forms a knot. One isn't enough. Here's the second one. Back through the same stitch. 
and then back through your own loop. When I'm sewing ballet shoes, I do an extra one for luck. Back through the loop. And you can see how strong that is. You can then trim it really close. If you're darning point shoes, the stitch that you need to learn is chain stitch. And when you're darning point shoes, you're using single thread and you don't need to tie a knot. On this practice piece, I have tied a dressmaker's knot in the thread, but on the point shoes, you won't need to. It's held underneath the platform fabric. This is chain stitch. You're working through a loop. So you make a stitch. And as you pull it through, that loop forms the stitch. In a normal stitch, we don't use the loop. Back through the loop, up. And the key to it is coming through the loop. If I didn't, there'd be no stitch to see. I'll show you one as an example. If I miss the loop, I'm going to miss the loop and watch what happens. It will unravel. Going again. Stitch through the loop. That's the basic chain stitch. Please refer to the point shoe darning video guide for how to apply this to a ballet shoe.